I feel very honored. You know, I, I, I don't know, church, I'd, I, as, as, as they were just singing, I just began to feel the presence of the Lord come in this place. And I just began to think, God, you've been so good to me, you know, and God, you, you've been so kind and you've blessed me. And God, I, I don't deserve what you do for me, but yet, God, you're still so good. And I just feel a spirit of gratitude in my heart right now because God has been good to me. And I wonder today, before we get in the word of the Lord, if God has been good to you, can you just give him some praise and just give him some thanks, just from the depths of your soul? If God has made a way where there seems to be no way, if God has saved you and God has filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and, and if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus and your sins have been washed away, you have a reason this morning you have a reason today to give him praise. That's it, just for a moment. God, you've been good to me. You've been good to me, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you honor. Majesty, dominion, and power belong to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God has been good to me. God has been good to me. Amen. If we could, for just a few moments this morning, I want to turn your attention to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number 15. And if you want to study this out a little further on your own time, you could read Mark, chapter 7. It's a parallel chapter to this uh, particular story we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with verse number 21, Matthew 15, and verse number 21. The scripture reads as follows. And Jesus went away from there and went Jew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Ever felt that way? You just have to cry out to God? You know what I'm talking about? You don't care what anyone else is doing, anything around you. You may be in your car on the way to work. You may be in your living room. You say, Jesus, I need you right now. My family needs you right now, Jesus. And you cry out. And people can look like, what in the world are they doing? Well, you're crying out because you need God. And this is what this Canaanite woman was doing. She said, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away, for she is crying out after us. There was obviously some type of miscommunication going on here, but... But, you know, in some ways, Jesus knows exactly what he's doing. You know, sometimes when you go and pray, you don't always hear a response right away. But that doesn't mean he's not working in the background. It doesn't mean that he didn't hear you. You may not get a response right now. But he is working. And so as she began to pray even more, and he answered her finally, and he said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him. I mean, she was intensifying her approach. And she knelt down before him and she said, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. You know, sometimes God's going to test us. If God just gave us everything we ever asked for, we would be spoiled. But sometimes God says, I'm going to give you a little test. Let's see how hungry you really are. Because if you're really hungry, you're going to keep on praying. If you're really hungry, you're going to keep on fasting. If you're really hungry, you're going to stay faithful to the house of God, no matter what is going on in your life. And so he said, give the bread and throw it to the dog. She said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs... Eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Tell you, there's power in crumbs. 
Today, if you just take a little bit of just the crumbs, I'm telling you, he's going to give you everything that's on the table. You could just take a little fragment right now, but if you take that little bit of fragment, he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out of his spirit a blessing upon you. Sometimes, hallelujah, sometimes you just have to take a fragment of an answer, but God's going to end up revealing his power and his glory and his majesty and his dominion and his power. He said, then Jesus answered and said, oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done unto you as you desire. And at that moment, instantaneously, you see, Jesus is so awesome, he didn't have to go and see that poor little girl. He just spoke the word and it was done. You know, you may have somebody in the hospital right now. Jesus doesn't even have to go up in the house. He could just speak the word. You may not even have to lay hands on that person, but you're praying and you're seeking after God and you're, you're calling upon his name. And just in one moment of time, all of a sudden, the tables are turned. Is anybody ready for the tables to turn in this place today? Is anybody ready for a miracle to take place in your life? Is anybody want to see a breakthrough in your family? I've come to tell you this morning, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready because God has some crumbs for you. Miracles, signs and wonders, blessings, I believe. All we need to do is get in the right position, position our faith so that that blessing can be realized in our lives. Get in the right position so that all we have to do is get some crumbs. And then everything else that's on the table. So by the help of the Holy Ghost, for just a few moments, I don't know if there's any dog lovers in this place. I know there are because there's some on that third row right there. I'm going to preach you for just a few moments on this thought. Every dog has its day. Every dog has its day. And don't say Brother Cabell called me a dog. I'm not saying that you're a dog, but I am telling you it's your day. I'm telling you today is a day of salvation. I'm telling you today is a day for your miracle. I'm telling you right now, this Sunday morning, is a time for your deliverance. It is a time for your breakthrough. It's a time for your comeback. This is a time. This is a day. This is the hour. And if you believe that, why don't you give the Lord some praise and some worship in this house right now? Come on and shout it to the Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place. We believe that you've ordained and you've called for this to take place. Have your way. Speak to every heart in life, we ask. And we're very careful, Father, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Set free, heal, deliver. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we all say in Jesus' name? Before you're seated, turn us on and say, every dog has his day. Every dog has its day. That's right. Every dog has his day. <laughs> That's all right. You know, you've been looking around and seeing all these other people being blessed, and you're wondering, you know what, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my season? When is my family going to show up on the pew someday and sit next to me? When is this pain going to leave my body? When am I going to see salvation be poured out? I'm telling you today, today is your day. I believe that you've been praying You've been seeking after God. You've been calling upon him and you've been saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. I want to tell you, your prayers have not fell upon deaf ears. You've not been praying to a dead God. You've not been praying to a God who's on vacation or a God who's taken a day off or a God who has walked out on you. I'm telling you right now, you're praying to an all-powerful God. I'm telling you, you've been praying to the Alpha, to the Omega, to the beginning and to the end, to the first and to the last. He is a creator. He is a savior. He is a liverer. And he's getting ready. 
to do a miracle in your life. Clap your hands to the Lord. Give the Lord some praise. I'm wondering today if I'm talking to somebody that's hungry for a miracle. I'm talking about is there any hungry folks in this place? I'm not talking about going to Manny's after service and getting a hamburger. And I'll tell you, I'll drive to Stockton just to go to Manny's. My wife always tells me about this pizza place called Dante's. Anybody hungry in this place? See, if I keep talking about food, you're going to be thinking about food, and I'm going to be like the Happy Meal with that, com- I mean, the, the toy that comes with a Happy Meal. All you're going to be thinking about is food, and you're like, Brother Capital, hurry up. I'm not talking about that type of hunger. I'm talking about somebody who's desperate for a breakthrough to take place in your life. I'm talking about somebody who wants to see revival in your family. I'm talking about somebody who wants to see their ministry rekindled. I'm talking about somebody who wants to see hope come alive again in your life. I wonder today if there's anybody that is hungry. You've been going through so many things, you probably even forgot what it is. What what blessing even tastes like? Well, I'm I'm telling you today, he's getting ready to serve you up some good blessing in this place. I'm telling you, he's getting ready to give you a plate full of miracles. I'm telling you right now, if you're really hungry, he has some crumbs that he's getting ready to pour out and say, you know what? You've been hungry, you've been thirsty, and I'm getting ready to break through for you. I'm talking about being hungry. And I'm telling you today that if you are so used to trial and suffering, that today is your day because God wants to give you a breakthrough. You've got comfortable with your suffering. You've got comfortable with your trial. And some of you have just decided in your mind, I've always suffered and I'm always going through things. And there's always been a shortage of money. And there's always been an abundance of pain in my life. And there's always been broken relationships. Well, I'm coming to tell you today, God's getting ready to stop that cycle inside of your life. God's getting ready to shake some things up inside of your experience. God is wanting you to hope again. God is wanting you to have faith again. God is wanting to let you know he's not done working in your life. I'm telling you, it's a season where you're going to get, you're going to get used to the miraculous. You're going to come to church on Sundays. You're going to say, I'm expecting for a miracle. If a miracle doesn't happen on Sunday, I'm wondering what's going on. If a miracle doesn't happen at Sunday night prayer, man, what's happening? Because God is getting ready. This is our day. And I I want to tell you, church, as the world grows darker and things get more volatile in our world, this is a great opportunity for God to move in our lives so if you want to have this type of blessing you've got to get in position and get ready right you've got to get ready right you're gonna if you want to eat when you get to the dinner table you better have a plate on that table and you better have your fork and you better have your spoon and you better have your tall diet pepsi up there you better, you better be ready. If you go up there without a plate, I don't know what you could do. They're going to have to put the enchilada in your hand or something. I don't know. But you better get ready. If you're getting ready to eat, I know what I do. I grab my utensils. I know that my wife's cooking something really good. I'm getting ready to get that food and put it inside this gullet. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. I know there's some foodies in this house. But let's talk about dogs. Is that all right? I'll show you a picture. Let me show you, see a picture up here. Is it, are we able to show it? See that dog right there? That's my dog. <laughs> Actually, that's her dog. Now, <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Every said something really funny the other day. He was preaching and he said, you know, he said, I don't believe in reincarnation. But he said, if, I, if there was reincarnation, he said, I want to come back as a lap dog. Because they get treated so well, right? They get to sleep up on their bed, and they get to eat at your table. And I, I, I got up to preach that night. I said, you know, Pastor, I just have to disagree. I want to come back as any lap dog. I want to come back as Desiree Caballero's lap dog. <laughs> that dog is very well taken care of. 
He gets more haircuts than I do, I think. He's probably more well-groomed and taken care of. He walks in and he knows exactly where his place is. But that's Max. And what Max likes to do is Max likes to hang around our table. And sometimes I get on Max because when we pray, he knows there's food up on that table. And so as we bind hands and we start to pray as a family, he starts to bark. And mama doesn't see it, but I'm going like this. And Max already knows it, so he doesn't get too close to me. But Max, if he hangs around the table long enough, he's going to get something. If he positions himself and he nuzzles up next to his mama, right? And if he just has that look like that, I mean, how can you? Come on. How are you going to say no to that look right there? Yes, he is. Look at his, look at his teeth are more polished and straighter than mine. But the key is, is that he stays close to that table. And he knows that even though the humans are up there eating, if I could just stay there close, my day is coming. If I could just keep making my case, if I could just be in the right position, if I, if I could just keep staying right close, somebody's going to slip me something underneath that table. And trust me, he does. But he's so well taken care of, church, that he doesn't just get anything. He only gets the vegetables. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk about my wife for just a second because she makes sure that anything that enters his mouth is just right. Even if there's too much sauce on that pasta, she'll clean that up, put that... <laughs> If I'm lying, I'm dying. (laughs) He's well taken care of. But the thing is, church, is that he knows. That dog's pretty smart. He knows to stay close to that table. He knows to be in the right position. He knows to be in the right place. And he knows that his time is going to come as long as he just stays very close. And so, so, so what I'm trying to tell us here today is that if we can just get in the right position, if we could just be in the right place, if we could just maneuver ourselves, like we've got to maneuver ourselves out of doubt. Like we've got to make a shift from unbelief and say, you know what, this is not going to get me anything from off of that table. If, not, if, I'm, if I'm not in the right place, at the right time, at the right situation, then that blessing's not going to come my way. I'm telling you right now that if I'm not worshiping, there's no way there's going to be a breakthrough in my life. Sometimes you got to worship through the pain. Sometimes you got to worship through the heartache. Sometimes you got to get up there and worship God when nobody else is worshiping God. Sometimes when pain is racking your body, you got to say hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow, I'm going to worship God no matter what happens. Sometimes when a loved one leaves you and sometimes when you're heartbroken, you got to be able to get up out of that place and say, God, I give you praise and I give you worship. You're good when you bless me. You're good when you take something away. God gives and God takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I wonder if we can worship the Lord right now. Come on, if you're going through some trial right now, if you're going through some heartache, if you're going through some difficult times, if you're having to scour through the couch to find some change, like our brother mentioned earlier, I challenge you to worship God and give him some praise and glory in this house right now. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to position ourselves with prayer. If you stop praying, how is that miracle ever going to take place? Even if no one else is praying, you've got to pray. Even if people haven't prayed with you, you've got to keep on praying. You've got to keep knocking. You've got to keep showing yourself before God so that God could do a miracle in your life. Oh, Brother Caballero, they didn't read my prayer request. It doesn't matter if they don't read your prayer request. 
Oh, Brother Caballero, nobody called me and told me. They're, you don't need anybody to call you and tell you that they're praying. You've got to pray. You've got to get a hold of the horns of the altar. You've got to find a place where you say, God, as long as you're on my side, as long as God is for me, who could be against me? Now, I'm not saying to not pray for each other. But what I am trying to do is I'm trying to take away some excuses. Right? When no one else prays, you pray. When you get in that room and you get next to your bed, you say, God, I'm going to pray until I see that change come. God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to get in the right position, God. It may not happen today, but I'm going to keep on praying because it might happen tomorrow. And God, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to shift my position. I'm going to keep on praying. And I'm going to keep seeking after you. Because it doesn't happen the next day, I'm going to still keep on praying. And I'm going to position myself. Because I know that crumb is getting ready to come off the table. I know God is getting ready to do something in my life. God's ready to, to, to put a five-course meal right in front of me. I mean, wouldn't it be a shame when God is getting ready to give you your breakthrough that that's the day that you stop praying? That's the day that you give up on your faith? I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, don't let the devil talk you out of your miracle. Don't let doubt steal your healing. Don't let unbelief remove that opportunity for a breakthrough in your life. It's getting in position. It's getting in position. If you could get into that place where God can do something in your life, God will bring you a breakthrough. I, I'm going to just, I'm just telling you right now, church, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to mess up my notes, but we'll get there and, and just act, if I say it again, just act like I never said it, right? But I'm telling you today, so many people in our society, they're wanting to point out everyone else, everything else. For the reason why they're in the circumstance that they're in. I'm telling you, church, we've got to pray. We've got to seek God. We've got to get a hold of God. And God is going to come through for us. God is going to come through for us. You can look around and say, all these reasons why your prayer is not being answered. And you're not praying. Well, that's, that's a good reason why it's not. But if you're praying... If you're seeking after God, I'm telling you, God is not deaf to your prayers. God knows exactly what you need. And if you're praying and seeking after God, God is going to bring that miracle to pass. Amen. Can we just lift up our hands for a moment and talk to the Lord? I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place right now. I feel like God is speaking to so many hearts right now. I feel, I feel God is dealing with somebody in the name of Jesus. Come on, it's your day right now. You've got to believe that. You've got to stop believing that your day is never going to come around. You've got to understand in the Holy Ghost that your day is today. That's it. Could somebody just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Go ahead. If you want to talk in tongues, go ahead and talk in tongues. I, I feel some hunger in this house right now. I feel somebody is desiring things from God. I, I feel in the spirit, I feel impressed with the Holy Ghost. That somebody, you're praying for a breakthrough, and this is the day for your breakthrough. You don't have to go and leave this place the same way that you came. You don't have to walk into the same home that you left this morning. But God wants to bring a change in your circumstance, and God is wanting to, to bring a breakthrough in your situation. Hallelujah. I said, go ahead and pray for just a moment. We're, gonna, we're just going to flow with the Holy Ghost right now. I, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place right now. Don't give up on your miracle. Don't give up on that prayer. Don't give up on desiring those things you've been desiring. You've been praying for children. God can, God can allow you to have children. You've been, you've been praying for God to do something miracle, a miracle in your finances. God can bring a miracle in your finances. Hallelujah. 
Kurabo Shotor Yandara Rabahatar Yandara Ramahaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if just just so just quietly just put a hand on the person next to you on their shoulder and I want you to pray God rekindle faith in their life today God God let them to believe again Jesus let them to hope again Jesus bring back that dream God restore that hope right now in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. It's all right if we have a little bit of pause. There's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and just let the Lord touch you right now. I'm telling you, if it's time for your breakthrough right now, you get your breakthrough right now. Let God begin to do what he wants to do in your life. If you need deliverance in this house, he'll give you deliverance right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Let me, if you're praying, you continue to pray. Amen, if you're praying, you continue to pray. Please understand something, church. Please understand something, church, that God... God wants you to have faith. God wants you to believe. Even when it looks like it's impossible. And I want to tell you today. I want to tell you in the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter who your mom and your dad are or were. Today is your day. God has a blessing for you. The currency of the Spirit is faith. And if you have faith in God, God is going to bless you. Just give me a few moments. Are you still with me, church? Just give me a few moments and we're going to pray because I feel like I'm going to release something uh, when we pray. Couple things I'm going to leave you with because I already just feel the presence of the Lord here, but I feel like I've, I've got to give this to you. Is, is that all right, church? I just have just a minute. I, I, I just I, I want I want to let you know something that if you want to position yourself for a miracle, you've got to understand that Jesus is your only source. Jesus is your only source. Why why am I saying this? This Canaanite woman came to Jesus. She really had no business dealing with him. Right? That wasn't her king. But she recognized and claimed him as her king. That's why she said, Jesus, thou son of David. She cried out to him because she realized that nobody was going to be able to help her daughter. The doctor was not going to be able to help her daughter. The government was not going to be able to help her daughter. The politicians were not going to be able to help her daughter. Education system was not going to be able to get that devil out of that girl. She had to realize that the only source that can give her the breakthrough that she desired, the only place she could go for her miracle, it wasn't to drugs, it wasn't to cocaine, it wasn't to, to drinking, it wasn't to, to alcohol, it wasn't to any of those things. But she realized that the source for all of her answers and desires was in Jesus. Have you found that to be true today? 
You may have looked in a lot of different places. You may have said, you know what, I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try that, and I'm going to smoke that, and I'm going to drink this, only to find out that you're still depressed. You're still downtrodden. You're still discouraged. I want to let you know today that when you just try Jesus, that when you just give Jesus a chance, and you say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I've tried everything else. I've been every other place. I've tried every other thing. But now I'm coming to the source where I know that the only way I can get my miracle is through you. Have you found that to be true today? I bet you there's some folks in this place. You've tried a lot of other things. You went a lot of other places. You thought the government, you thought all the, you thought a lawyer can get you out of your situation. You thought that a doctor could make it all better. But I'm telling you today, the only one that could truly satisfy your soul, the one that could truly heal your body, the one that could truly put your marriage back together again, the one that could truly bless your finances, the one that could bring you out of depression. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I'm telling you today, under the authority of the Holy Ghost, Jesus is here right now. Jesus can't be your second option. Jesus can't be your spare tire. You've got to rely upon him and say, Jesus, I'm trusting you. I'm standing upon your word. I'm telling you, I've been on the foreign field a couple times, just very short trips. And you know what? When you go down to some of those places, they don't have all the medication and the they can't go around the corner and just go pick up a bottle of Tylenol. And then, no, they, they need God to do a miracle right there and right then. Could it be that in, in a place where we have so many different options, we've kind of not relied upon Jesus to take care of the situation? We want to Google everything. Can I tell you, before you go on Google, before you ask your friends on Facebook... Before you go on Instagram and present all your problems, why don't you find a, a closet of prayer and talk to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. You are the source. You are the answer to my situation. You can give me the solution to my problem. You can't rely upon your friends to give you all the answers. I'm not saying to not have people pray. That's not what I'm saying at all. But before you tell your best friends, before you tell your girlfriend, before you put it out for everybody to see on social media, I challenge you, take it to Jesus. I challenge you, bring it up in a time of prayer. I challenge you, in the midnight hour, take it to the Lord. If you believe that, give the Lord some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just about done here. Just bear with me because when we're going to have a prayer here in just a moment, I believe God's going to do some life-changing things. I, I feel faith already in this place. I'm just helping us get in position. Is that all right? I'm just helping us to move in that right place. And so God's helping us. So here's the other thing I want you to keep in mind. That when you're getting ready and you're getting in position for a miracle, timing is very important. Everybody say timing. Timing is everything. Listen to what she said to Jesus. She said, she said, Lord, help me. He said, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. There's a lot of meaning in that statement. He wasn't trying to call her a dog in, in, in a bad sense because that word dog is actually like a little, a little puppy. If he was really calling her a dog, he would have said like a big hound dog or something like that. That's not what he was saying in that particular instance. But what he was trying to say is that, 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 that there is a time for everything. And without going deep into the biblical timeline, we know that Jesus presented himself first to the Jews. And then when we see in the book of Acts, it was open up to everyone, right? There was a 400 year period of silence where they didn't hear anything from God. Jesus was destroying that and fixing it. And then it was going to be opened up to the entire world. And in some senses, he was trying to say, you know what? It's not quite time yet. It's not quite time yet. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Jesus when you try to rush his timeline, he's going to let you know. 
right? Or if you're trying to get in the way of his timeline, think about at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, when his mom wanted to turn it into the water into wine. Mom always wants us to do something. Always got to do something for mom. And how do you say no to mom? What do you say? Say, woman, what do I have to do with you? It's not, my time is not yet. There is a reason because Jesus was unfolding a revelation. And he said, that's not, it's not time for me to do that yet. It's not, that's a bad request, but, but it's just not the right time. There's going to be a time where I'm going to do more than turn water into wine. I'm going to fill people with the baptism of my spirit. He said it wasn't the right time. What about, what about when Peter and Jesus was talking about his, his crucifixion that was coming, and Peter said, you know what, God, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to let that happen, and, and I'm going to stand in the way of that. And you know what Jesus told him? Get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't just called a dog. He was called the devil. Jesus was saying, don't mess with my timeline because I know what I'm doing. I've seen the first and I've seen the last. I was there at the beginning and I'm already there at the end. I know exactly how this is going to unfold. Let my timeline come to pass. So timing is very, very important. We have to understand that God's timing is better than our timing. We want to rush everything. We want things to happen right now, right? We want to have like a like Pop-Tarts. You put that in for just a couple minutes and bam, you got a Pop-Tart. You're ready to have breakfast. That's like, that's like a four-star breakfast right there. Strawberry Pop-Tarts? Come on, somebody. I, I, there's no shame in my game. I like Pop-Tarts. I don't eat them. I don't eat them because I probably would have some issues if I ate too many of those. So I try to, try to eat as healthy as I can, but not always. But we have that type of mentality, right, where we want God to just, just pop it right out and put it in the, in, the, in, in the toaster, and boom, there's my, no, there's timing. So when you pray and it hasn't happened just yet, that is not a signal for you to give up on your faith. That is not a signal for you to stop praying. You know what? That's actually like a, an alarm on your phone saying, you know what? You better keep on praying because it's going to happen. Every dog has its day, right? There's going to come a day when it's going to happen, and I want to be ready for it. I want to put myself in position. It may not be right this second, but it's going to happen. And I just have a feeling today, I felt very impressed uh, in my spirit, church, that today was going to be a day. Some of you have been praying for things for a long time. Today is that day. Today is that day. Oh, that's a little bit weak. Come on, help me, somebody. Today is that day. And I'm telling you, when we get to pray here in just a minute, if you're one of those folks, or you've been praying for something, you better be the first one here at this altar. So here's the last thing. We, we look at our timing, right? We look at, we, we, we look at um, looking at Jesus as our only source. Here's the last thing I want to give you, because this is the thing that's going to put all together, church. Are you ready to get in position for a miracle? Right? We're getting ready for it. We're, it's, it's like the Super Bowl just took place, right? Every person had to be in place, and everybody had to be in the right place so that they could score a touchdown, right? Right? You had to have the receivers in the right place. You had to have the quarterback in the right place. The tight end got to, has to know who he's going to block. Everybody's got to be in the right position for the victory to take place. You've got to be ready. You've got to position yourself so that you're going to get ready to receive the victory that God has for you. Get ready. I'm telling you, get ready. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place right now. I know I'm giving you a little instruction, but I feel the Holy Ghost very strong in this place right now. Finally, Jesus said, when, when he told her about the, 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 the table, right, and he, she said this. She could have just stopped. She could have said the timing's off. She could have said, maybe Jesus is in my source. But you know what? Instead of saying that, she said, yes, Lord, what you're saying is true. But even the dogs, even the dogs get the crumbs that come off of the master's table. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, great is your faith. 
It wasn't okay faith. It wasn't that'll do faith. It was great faith. And I'm telling you, if you exhibit and demonstrate that type of faith, Jesus would say, you know what? I, I take notice of that. I'm going to bless that faith. I'm telling you today, church, he can't bless doubt. He can't bless negativity. If you go around talking about how bad your life is, and you go around talking about how bad things are, I'm telling you, that's a very difficult environment for God to do something in your life. But when you begin to speak faith, and you say, you know what, it doesn't matter what's going on in our world today, I know that God has a miracle for me. I know that God wants to do something in my life. I know that God's going to do it, and I know that it's going to happen. You got to change your vocabulary. You got to change the way you talk. Maybe it's if, it, if it's the people you're talking with, you need to consider who you're talking to. But you better start talking faith. And you better say, you know what? It doesn't matter what the past has been like. It doesn't matter what history has been like. All that matters is right here, right now, God is going to do a miracle for me. If you believe that, give him some praise in this place. So here's the final thing to get in position. The most important thing is desire. You've got to desire the thing that you're praying for more than anything. If you don't care about it, God's not going to care about it. If you've given up on it, God, how's God going to be able to follow? You've got to care about it. This is a quote that I read. What, what counts is not necessarily the size of the dog in the fight, but it's the size of the fight in the dog. Desire is what makes the difference. Desire it was what's going to propel us to that breakthrough. Desire is going to be that last thing to get me in the position where I say, you know what? Nobody's going to move me. No trial's going to shake me. No illness is going to stop me. No devil's going to block me. I have this desire and passion that I want to see God move. I mean, going back to those football players, you see how they play? When they run into that first defender, they don't say, oh, I better fall down. No, they say, I'm going to push you out of the way, and I'm going to keep on running, and I run into the next guy, I'm going to spin around him, and then I'm going to get behind my blocker, and I'm going to keep going until I score a touchdown. You've got to have that desire and that passion in your spirit that's got to be burning deep inside of you that, God, I'm going to see a miracle take place in my family. God, I'm going to see a miracle take place in my life. God, nothing is going to stop me. Hallelujah. Can we worship the Lord together? Come on, is there, is there somebody that's hungry? Is there somebody that has passion for God to do something in your life? Let's stand all together. Hallelujah. It's your day. It's your day. Come on, I don't know what your miracle is, but it's your day. You know, church, it's, this is open right now. I, I, I just wanna, I want you to all make your way up to the front if you desire God to do something for you. Let me have your attention for a moment, and we're going to pray. I want to share this with you. I, I, I felt led to share this with you, and, and I'm going I'm to leave this with you because I want it to be a sign for you. When I was raised growing up, I, uh, my, my dad, he, he left us when we were little. And I, I, when I was about 12, I had to go and move in with my grandparents. And my grandfather was my step-grandfather. 
And he was already done raising kids. He didn't need to raise any more kids, but he had to take me, my sister, right? And so he took us in. And I'm, I want to tell you something, church. That that, that man, I, I, I honor him today, but I'm telling you, that man had a tough life. That man would, 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 he, he would drink alcohol all day long, all day long. And, and, and you know, if you've lived in a house like that, you know that it's kind of tough sometimes. I don't have to even say it. It's tough. And, 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 and we grew up that way, and, and he would always, he would always uh, tell us, oh, you're going to, my grandma would take us and take us to church. Oh, you're going to church again? What do you mean you're going to church on Wednesday night? You already went to church twice on Sunday. Why do you need to go on Wednesday night as well? Well, hey, every time the doors are open, right, you go into the house of the Lord. So he would say, you don't need to go to church and, and sometimes make it difficult. And through all those years that I grew up in that home, we always prayed for him. We called him Pops. And we'd always pray for him. And we'd pray and, and, and ask God. And, and, and there'd be times that, that we would go around our house and we would anoint every doorpost. And we'd anoint his chair. And we'd anoint his, his table. And we're just like, God, we need something to happen in this place. We'd anoint everything we could. And there's some times we just get some oil and we just put it on him. You know what I'm talking about. When you're desperate, you'll do anything, right? When you're hungry for God to do something, you'll just say, you know, I'm going to move out all, I'm going I'm to take out all the stops. And, you know, we're going to pray. And we pray. And, and my, my beautiful grandmother, she lives in San Jose, and, and tremendous woman of God. She would say, you know, we're going to go pray. And we'd pray. And we'd pray for that man and pray for that man. And it seemed like church that the more we prayed, the more obstinate he became. And it was like, sometimes you felt, God, can't we just get a couple crumbs? Just give me a little crumb. Just give me a little triangle of a corn tortilla. Give me something. Give me a potato. Give me something. And it just seemed like there was never that breakthrough. But you know, church, we didn't stop praying. My grandmother, she would pray. I'd hear her pray at night. I'd hear her pray at other times. She's praying for my grandfather and just calling upon the name of the Lord. And we were praying and seeking after God. And it just didn't seem like anything was going to happen. And then to make matters worse, uh, it was back in the late 90s. We, we, you know, he, was, he was ill and we went to the doctor and we found out you have cancer. Right? So we, you know, time's running out. I don't know about you, but... You know, when, when it looks like the clock's getting down to zero, you start getting more frantic. Like, God, we need a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough. And this man's 84 years old. And, you know, there's, a, there's another saying about dogs, right? They say it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. It's hard to treat uh, advanced humans new tricks, right? Come on, let's just be real. And so we prayed and we sought after God. And, 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 it, was, and it, was, it was getting, it was, about no, it was about November of the year. And out of the blue church, he says, you know what? He's already full of cancer. His, 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 his body's getting weak. And, and he says, you know what? I want to go get baptized. <laughs> Crumbs. I'm telling you, there's, there's some healing in those crumbs. If the meal has miracles, then there's healing in the crumbs as well, right? I'll take some crumbs any day. I mean, I want the whole thing, but God, I'll even take the crumbs. And so he said, you know, we wanna, we, we, I want to get baptized. And I remember as we took him into that church, and we had a wheelchair him up. And the, the baptistry that time in our, in our church there in San Jose was a difficult baptistry. You had to walk up these steep steps. And he was so weak, we just about had to carry him. But I'm telling you what, if I had to put that man on my back, I would have put my, him on my back to get him in that baptistry. And we were getting ready to baptize him. And I said, you know what, maybe, maybe we need to hold him down just a little extra longer. Let's make sure it's good and done. But he got into that baptistry, and I remember like it happened yesterday, and it's, it's been 20 years ago, but I, I remember as we, 
we, we took, him, took, took him up there and he could barely, even, he barely had any strength. His body was so weak from the cancer and he was an elder. We took him, we put him into that water. And when we went down into that water, I was there with my, my bishop and we baptized him together, my grandfather, and we put him down in the name of Jesus. And when he came up out of that water, he came up out of the water, 84 years of age, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Three months later, he went home to be with Jesus. I'm telling you today, every dog has his day. It's all going to happen. It's all going to come around. It took us 20 years, over 20 years of praying but it happens. I'm telling you, church, if you have desire and if you only look to Jesus, God is going to do it for you. Are you ready? If you need a miracle right now, just lift up your hands. Get yourself in position. I want you to have faith. I want you to believe. I want you to look at Jesus as your only source. And I want you to pray with passion. And right now, whatever that need is, we are going to pray and we're going to believe that God is going to do it when we speak. That's it. Everyone across this sanctuary, lift up your hands. And we're going to speak a word of faith. And then we're going to start praying for each other. And I believe God is going to pour out miracles all across this place right now. God, right now, I want to speak a word of faith over this congregation. Lord, it's their day. They've been praying. They've been seeking after God. They're hungry for the things of God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God and the power in the name of Jesus, I speak miracles. I speak signs. I speak wonders. I speak financial blessings. I speak children. I speak spiritual breakthroughs. I speak the healing of families right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over broken bodies and I speak healing over depressed minds right now in Jesus' name. Why don't you go ahead and lift up your voice. Come on, why don't you go after those crumbs right now. Come on, you're in the right position. You position yourself. Here it is in the name of Jesus. Go and get that blessing right now by faith. Let's pray right now.